All right, guys, so today is MLK Day, a.k.a. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, a day where we're all supposed to uh, take a step back and reflect on the contributions that he gave to this country and the sacrifices that he made in the name of civil rights. Now, you would think that a day like today would be non-political, okay? People would keep their politics out of their uh, remarks about MLK. However, uh, the Democrats are not above that. <laughs> they actually stoop as low as possible uh, to uh, push their agenda. And that's what they're going to do today, right? Is they're going to use MLK's name to basically uh, smear people who don't agree with them. Uh, so let's go ahead and roll the footage on what the Democrats are talking about today and how they're using MLK's name uh, to push their political agenda. Take a look. Our democracy, because nothing less is at stake than our democracy. This is about suppressing the vote. It's about nullifying the elections, which Dr. King talked about that day. Nullifying the election. It's about uh, just doing so many things to be obstacles to participation. That's wrong. The truth is, that's wrong. And this family, and John Lewis, and so beautifully that this bill is named for him, but the first bill, he wrote the first 300 pages of what is now called uh, Freedom to Vote. And as has been indicated by the King family, these, this bill is supported by all of the Democrats, House and Senate. It's just the filibuster in a way. So in a way, if you really truly want to honor Dr. King, don't dishonor him by using a congressional custom as an excuse for protecting our democracy. We have no right to honor this family, to visit the monument. Imagine 30, somewhat 36 years old, left this earth in such a way that he has a monument on the mall, along with Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, all of them with tears in their eyes for the departure from our democracy that is happening right now, unless the truth is acknowledged and this legislation is passed. Guys, I am never surprised how low the Democrats will stoop to uh, push their propaganda on people. And in this case, the propaganda is the conspiracy that uh, the GOP <laughs> is uh, suppressing people's votes and that your voting rights are under attack, right? It's 100% a conspiracy, okay? They have no evidence to back it up. That's why they never name any, right? And listen to her talk, right? First of all, I'm thinking like, how can anybody vote for a person like this that, you know, speaks the way she speaks? But <laughs> basically what she's saying is that um, in order to honor Dr. Martin Luther King's legacy, you have to agree with us. Honoring Dr. Martin Luther King is agreeing with Democrats, right? And you know how you know that's true? You know how you know that's what she thinks? It's because uh, she brings up the filibuster and how uh, you got to remove the filibuster or else you're not in line with what <laughs> Dr. Martin Luther King wants. And I would ask her, well, was Chuck Schumer in line with MLK when he was against removing the filibuster when the Democrats were in the minority, <laughs> Right. He must have been against MLK, right? Again, according to her logic. But again, uh, her logic here is simply that uh, if you disagree with us, then you're racist, right? That's where this comes from. And they have no problems invoking any character in history in order to uh, try to sway people to believe their nonsense, right? <laughs> She's sitting here talking about uh, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln having tears in their eyes <laughs> because the Democrats can't pass their agenda. Again, it's quite incredible how low these people will stoop, right? How they will just invoke any name, any character in history in order to try to convince people that nonsense, right? When, in my opinion, if you want to talk about disrespect towards MLK, uh, the most disrespectful thing that I've heard in regards to MLK is what Joe Biden said last year comparing George Floyd's death to MLK's death. <laughs> Take a look. But even Dr. King's assassination did not have the worldwide impact that George Floyd's mm -hmm. death did. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. Simply incredible. Again, I tell you, <laughs> Democrats will stoop as low as possible, okay, in order to push their propaganda on people. This man, Joe Biden, last year, <laughs> literally said 
that George Floyd's death had more of an impact than MLK's death. Really. I mean, listen, I don't need to go into much detail about just how asinine and insane that statement is. Okay. I don't even need to talk about it that much, right? Because uh, it'll make the video too long. Uh, so <laughs> with that being said, the Democrats also use MLK Day to uh, smear their own party, right? As they went after Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema today, once again, for opposing uh, getting rid of the filibuster. Take a look. Every day that Senator Cinema and Senator Manchin side with a Republican party that has been hijacked by MAGA enthusiasts and conspiracy theorists, is another day the forces seeking to undermine our democracy get even stronger. Yeah, look, the people like Joe Manchin and Kristen Cinema, these are the white people that Martin Luther King Jr. warned us about. These are the white liberals who have no sense of urgency, commitment, or integrity when it comes to the progress of justice in the country. And that's just that's just a fact. I don't know if they can live with themselves with that, but that is that is the reality of the situation. And so Republicans are not going to uh, confront Trump. Uh, they're going to do whatever they're told. They don't have the spine uh, to stand up against them. And so we're in a difficult position. We have two Democrats, Manchin and Sinema, and they are holding up the Democratic agenda. They have decided uh, that they are going to stick with support of the filibuster, and they don't care whether or not they undermine the rights of minorities and blacks in this country. You know, blacks have fought very hard to make this a stronger democracy. We've worked very hard for equal rights. We've worked very hard for civil rights and voting rights, and these two are basically saying to us they don't care. They don't care about us. They don't care what it means uh, to weaken our ability to participate in this democracy. And what everybody better understand is this democracy is at stake. And these domestic terrorists are organizing. The president is helping them in the way that he speaks to them. He's helping them in the way that he encourages them. And so we're in for it. So I would so, love so, to be able to come out of that Senate with uh, the votes for voting rights, but it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible. <laughs> Bro, at this point, this stuff is just comedy to me at this point. It really is. OK, one of these guys was like, yeah, uh, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema are the white liberals that MLK warned us about. <laughs> Incredible stuff. OK, even after Kirsten Sinema basically came out and said, yeah, I, I support this bill. I, I want to vote for this bill. I would vote for this bill. However, I'm not going to get rid of the filibuster in order to uh, vote for this bill. But for whatever reason, they spend that as, well, no, no, you're just against the bill, right? Being against the filibuster is not the same as being against the bill, okay? It's not the same thing, okay? Even though I think that the bill is ridiculous, I think it's completely unnecessary, it's, it's based off a of conspiracy, um, which is funny because, you know, Democrats are accused Republicans of pushing conspiracies. But, yeah, um, the... Criticism here of Joe Manchin kills the cinema. It's again, it's kind of hilarious because now it's well, they don't like black people, right? They're racist, right? The Democrats are using the same rhetoric that they use against Republicans, they're using against their own party. These two are racist because they don't agree with us, right? They don't want to get rid of filibuster, which has long term consequences, okay? In the sense that, yeah, I mean, you can get rid of filibuster, but when if slash when Republicans take back power. Uh, which is likely to happen in 2022, um, they can just get rid of it, right? And then Republicans can just do whatever they want, okay? Or when Republican takes office in 2024, they can just do whatever they want because you got rid of the filibuster. Again, getting rid of the filibuster, um, the question of that goes beyond just, okay, do I want to pass this legislation right now, right? This Voting Rights Act, okay? It goes beyond just that. It has other implications that Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin have clearly outlined, right? They've clearly outlined it. But again, that nuance is lost in the sauce with the Democrats. Because they want what they want and they want it now, okay? So therefore, uh, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, because, you know, hey, they're trying to look out for stability in our institutions, which that's what the filibuster is for, it's for stability. That's really what it's for. Oh, yeah, they're against blacks, right? They're against black people. They don't like black people. Matter of fact, uh, not only do they not like black people, they're also against MLK, right? They're the white people that MLK warned us about. 
Incredible stuff. Incredible stuff. It really is. And this is why, you know, <laughs> I don't know why Joe Manchin's still a Democrat. He might as well just become a Republican. I mean, CNN is basically already calling Kirsten Sinema a Republican. So again, at this point, like I said, they're going to call you racist, right? They're going to say you're against MLK. Uh, yeah, why even be a Democrat at this point? Why be a Democrat? Because these are the same exact tactics they use against Republicans. So, uh, again, I just find this hilarious. Uh, I, I don't think that this is going to sway Joe Manchin, Kirsten Sinema in any way. But hey, who knows? <laughs> we'll see. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.